what's up guys welcome back to my channel my name is Alia if you are new here so in today's video I am going to be talking all about how I reverse aged my skin now I've always looked pretty good for my age and a lot of that is genetics but there are a few things that sometimes genetics just can't beat and that is when these practices and skincare come into play. Now as a teen and young adult, I honestly was not into skincare, didn't give it much of a thought. I was using tanning beds regularly from the time I was 21 to 23-ish. There was like a good solid year where I used the tanning bed a few times a week because it was free with my gym membership and I just wanted to be tan. And that definitely caused a lot of long-term damage that I didn't realize obviously at the time. I also used to binge drink regularly in college and I mean that has kind of gone on in my life up until recently. Your girl just likes to go out and have a good time, you know, shake it, a few shots. What can I say? I'm in Ireland, we drink. And the skincare that I was using was honestly horrific. I was using that St. Ives apricot scrub for years, like all through high school, all through college, just ripping up my skin. Oh my God, like honestly, I cringe thinking about it. And then just really basic products that just didn't have any noteworthy ingredients that just weren't doing anything for my skin. And I never, ever, ever wore SPF. So you can see how all of those things combined, the dehydration from the alcohol, the sun damage from the tanning beds, and also just living in Arizona and California for a combined nearly 10 years would just really cause long-term damage to my skin as well as just crappy products. So anyways, enough of the rambling. Let's dive on into exactly what I use to help reverse age my skin. And the first thing was really to repair the moisture barrier on my skin. Like I said, I was just using products that were stripping my skin, leaving it really dry, I was drinking a lot, there was just like nothing going back into my skin, everything was just being sucked out. So the first thing I did was pick up a good cleanser that really helped to fix my moisture barrier, and you guys have heard me talk about this one a lot, I actually have two here now. But the first one is by Crave Beauty, and that is the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser, gentle and non-stripping, and... This one basically helps to restore your moisture barrier in your skin. It has a skin balancing pH level. And this has matcha, hemp seeds, oats, almonds, vitamin B5, and sodium PCA. So this really was a game changer for me. I was kind of just bouncing around with various different facial cleansers for years. Nothing was really that great. Eventually, after a few weeks, my skin always felt really, really dry. And it wasn't until this that I really started to see major changes. So honestly, sometimes starting from the very beginning, starting from scratch, can just be the best way to go, especially if you're noticing a lot of dryness. Now this is a Korean skincare brand, and it can be really hard to get your hands on, especially if you live in Europe, because it just doesn't ship to Europe, and if you try to get it on Amazon, it's like three times the price. This should retail for $16 in the US. But a new one that was actually sent to me in the mail that I love is the Iunic Centella Mild Cleansing Foam, and this is a pH of 5.5, so it is again great for balancing the skin's pH levels and helping to repair that moisture barrier. So this says Centella Asiatica Extract 49.9%, and it says skin relief and moisturizing pH balancing for all skin types. Now this is more of like a jelly formula, and this is more of a creamy formula. So I love both of these, they're both very affordable. This one obviously ships to a lot more places because I was able to get it here in Ireland. So I'll link both of these down below. You can pick this one up on, I believe, Yes Style and possibly also Stylevana, so I'll double check that for you. Now let's talk about acne scars and sun damage. <laughs> I had a lot of scarring on my forehead, primarily from when I went through this sort of strange adult acne hormone imbalance phase, and I had severe, severe, severe acne all over my forehead, my chest, and my back, to the point where I would not leave the house for months. Like, I was a wreck. I just asked my ex-boyfriend because he had to put up with it. But yeah, it was just not a good time in my life. I had just recently stopped taking the hormonal birth control pill and I was on that for about like nine plus years. 
And obviously that's giving you synthetic hormones. So when you rip that away, just cold turkey, your body is confused. It's not able to produce its own hormones again. And it just takes a while. So it did. It took like probably two years for my skin to really like normalize. And I really, I saw dermatologists. I did everything. There was nothing, no suggestion other than to just go back on the pill, which is not really a sustainable solution because I just don't want it. I didn't want to do that and you can't do that forever. So then fast forward to once the acne was gone, I was left with all of these horrible dark marks all over my skin. You can probably see it in a lot of my older makeup videos and skincare videos where I have no makeup on my face. You will definitely see there are acne marks or acne on my forehead. And the first thing that really helped to fix this was the use of a vitamin C serum. Now I normally pick up the one from Boots. It's their number seven radiance 15% serum. That's my all time favorite one, but I was testing out a different vitamin C serum. So that's why I have this one on hand right now. But honestly, game changer. If you suffer from dark spots and scarring, you need to give vitamin C a go. I have no more acne scars anywhere on my face at all. Like not a single one. It is shocking. Like it is shocking when you look at the old photo compared to now. I can't even believe it's the same forehead. Now I find that a vitamin C potency of 10% to 20% is going to be ideal. Anything less than that and you're not really getting enough to see significant changes. And also make sure that your active vitamin C ingredient is within the first three to four ingredients listed on the back. If it's any further down than that, you're just not really getting a lot of the benefits. And the best one that you really want to look for is L-ascorbic acid. It is more unstable, which means it can oxidize faster. And what happens when a vitamin C oxidizes is it's supposed to look clear, right? So this one obviously is not oxidized, it's clear. But if you do notice your vitamin C starting to look orangish or brown, that means it is oxidizing. So you always wanna make sure it is in a dark glass bottle or an opaque container, and you wanna always store it in a dark, cool place. So don't like waste your money buying a super expensive vitamin C and then having it die on you. Also, you don't need to spend a lot of money. Like I said, the number seven one is probably $25 worth every cent. The next thing that made a huge difference in changing the appearance of my skin was the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant with salicylic acid. Now this actually helped so, so much with my acne. Before that, I just couldn't really get a grasp on it. And also when I would drink a lot more often, alcohol just causes me to break out. I think it might do that for a lot of people, but definitely does that for me. So this really helped to combat that. So I use this at night. You don't really wanna like mix these two. So this during the day, this one at night. And I could use this every night and not have any like irritation, but obviously test it first. Maybe start like every other night, just see how it goes. But basically this is just a light liquid exfoliant. You don't have to rub it in. You literally just pat it. Like I would pour it into my hand and pat it on my face and on my neck and like jaw and you just let it absorb. So you wanna wait probably like an hour before applying any other skincare over this. And the only skincare that I applied over this is rosehip seed oil, which I'll get to in a minute, or a moisturizer. I don't really mix it with a lot of other things because I don't want to cause any irritation and mess up my moisture barrier. So this is really great. This also evens out your skin tone and targets fine lines and wrinkles, so Again, I was seeing a lot of, you know, pigmentation and fine lines from my years in the tanning bed and the beach. <laughs> now, beta hydroxy acid basically simulates the exfoliation of more youthful skin because when our skin is younger, our cell turnover is quicker. And as we get older, obviously it slows down. Your skin starts to look more dull. It doesn't exfoliate as often. So this definitely helps to speed up that process as well as unclogging pores and just giving you a super smooth finish. Honestly, when I was using this every day, I had glass-like skin. I don't use this as often anymore, which is why the bottle is so small, because I started using Tretinoin, and I didn't include that in this video because I've only been using it since March, and I felt like that'd be unfair to say that that played a part in my reverse aging, because while it will down the road, it is too soon to really, like, 
add that in and say that that for sure has made a difference since March. The next product that I want to share with you is rose hip seed oil. And honestly, guys, if you have not tried rose hip seed oil, you needed to try it like yesterday. This is just amazing. Not only do you have vitamin C in here, but you also have vitamin A. And vitamin A is obviously the main ingredient in retinoids and tretinoin. So we know it's good for our skin, right? It also has essential fatty acids in there, and this has honestly just been a staple holy grail for me for probably the last, I want to say like four or five years now. I've recommended this, well, I've pretty much recommended all these products to everyone, but I've definitely recommended this. If you're my friend, you've definitely heard me talk about this. But basically, uh, rosehip seed oil is known to reverse signs of sun damage, because you know we needed that reduce wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, as well as treat acne. So combining these three in your routine, if you were suffering, you know, from acne, from scarring, from sun damage, I promise you, you will see a difference. Now, I wanna mention that rosehip seed oil does make your skin look oily. It is an oil, and so I recommend putting it on at night, probably a couple hours before bed, because you don't wanna put on oil and then just like lay on your pillow and get it all greasy and have it like rub off. But if you have extremely dry skin, you could implement it in your morning routine as well. It can be used both day and night. I just prefer it at night. And I have been able to layer it over any and all skincare products I have ever used and never had any adverse reaction. I can even put it over my tretinoin, totally fine. So it's definitely a very versatile oil. Now for cream or lotion or moisturizer, or whatever you call it. The best cream I have ever used is another Korean skincare brand and it is by the brand Iliun. And this is the Ceramide Atto Concentrate Cream. And look how giant this tub is. And I'm pretty sure I got this for like seven bucks, so. <laughs> now the reason I picked this up was because I saw that it was recommended for people who use tretinoin as a great barrier cream, but I mean, I use it pretty much every night anyway, and it just makes my skin look amazing the next day. Like, it just looks like glass skin. I don't know what is in it because I cannot read the ingredients. They are not in English, but I do know that according to the front, it says ceramides, and ceramides are very important for our skin. I also know that the ceramide complex is patented based off of their description on the website, and this really just plumps and hydrates your skin. You can use this under your tretinoin and retinols, and then obviously when you apply those, you can put this over it. You can use this as a final step in your skincare routine. Once you have done all of your serums, you can use this in the morning, anytime, anywhere, any place, baby. It does not leave your skin looking oily or greasy at all. It is just very like hydrating, but it sinks into the skin. You don't have like a residue on your face all day, which is amazing. It's also fragrance free, so don't worry about any sort of irritation. There's nothing worse than putting on a moisturizer that's heavily fragranced and it just makes you want to gag. So you don't have an issue with that. And honestly, there's so much in here, it lasts you forever. Now the next one may sound a bit odd, but bear with me. It is the Eucerin Aquaphor Soothing Skin Balm, and you're gonna use this for slugging. And you're probably like, what the heck is slugging? And I've talked about it briefly in my last video, but basically it is when you put a balm or petroleum jelly on your skin before bed to lock in all of the moisture, and that just helps keep your skin from having trans epidermal water loss, which can cause fine lines, especially when sleeping. I personally somehow get really dehydrated when I sleep, don't know how, but this has made a huge difference. In the last couple years, I started noticing I was getting fine lines and creases right here, especially from the way I slept when I'd sleep on my side, I would get creases, and they just sort of over the years stopped going away like they used to. They started becoming more permanent, and I was starting to freak out about that because it just, it was like a very visible crease that didn't, that just never left. So basically what I did was I would do my skincare routine, I would put on my eye cream, I would put this over, so I put it around my eyes here, sides of my nose, a little bit like on the fine line of my forehead and on my lips, and then I would basically put on an eye mask and go to bed, I'll get into this in a minute. And then I just never got creases there again. So I think it's a combination of the two, but this definitely helps to keep your under eye area really hydrated. That area is really sensitive and it's one of those places we start to notice fine lines, crow's feet, that kind of thing first. And this is so cheap. 
like you can use really any petroleum jelly you want but i just really like this one so that's what i've been doing for the last probably year year and a half and you didn't think i'd forget an spf did you now my current favorite one i need to order a new one of because it has gone missing and that is the purito spf 50 plus 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 that is my favorite it's very lightweight it's scentless it goes great under makeup it's just a great everyday sunscreen but a couple others that i've tried recently that i've really liked are this one is from gila 8 this is the tea tree sika calming sunscreen and this is also an spf 50 plus pa plus 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 and this is lightweight fast absorbing that delivers a matte finish to help protect skin and i would say it's more of like a natural finish it's not super matte but it's definitely not a greasy oily finish and this is a korean skincare brand and the next one is actually a spanish brand and this is isden and this is the isden photo era fatana ageless ultra light emulsion broad spf 50 and this is designed for photo aging defense it's a 100 mineral sunscreen water resistant for up to 40 minutes and this one's tinted and i just did a whole review on that in the last video so if you haven't seen that go check that one out this one's amazing. I'm wearing it today. I wear it in place of my foundation during the week, especially if I'm going to be filming or just don't feel like looking homeless, you know, sometimes just, just want to look cute, you know? So I've been using this one. Really like it. This one definitely is a matte finish. It is more matte than I would say this one and all my makeup layers over this perfectly, no issue. So love this one. And since I've been using sunscreen the last probably, I would say the last three years, more like the last two years really religiously though. But the last three years I did get into using an SPF more frequently and I do notice that has helped a lot. And I put that on my face, my neck, the backs of my hands. And if I'm leaving the house, I have one that I put on my chest and my arms because I have been noticing this area and my arms are looking more spotty. And I'm pretty sure the majority of that is from past sunbed exposure. Now the last two things I want to talk about, you've already seen me share the eye mask. This is so so good for around your eyes and not just from you know like a, a sleeping standpoint. Get one that is like a silk eye mask or satin one. They sell them on Amazon. This one came in a pack of like two I think. This is the brand Lily Silk and it is adjustable. They come in all different colors. It is two layers with like a cushy center so good honestly this has really just prevented any more creasing and lines on my face it is just really protecting that area right in here where you know when you sleep you kind of like push your face up especially if you're a side sleeper like me this kind of just doesn't allow my cheek to get pushed up like that this kind of just blocks it somehow so don't know how it does it amazing Mwah. love you and then the last thing is a silk or satin pillowcase now I have expensive fancy silk ones which I love but to be honest they are a bitch too clean because you have to hand wash them and let them dry. You cannot throw them in the washing machine and put them in the dryer you'll ruin the silk. So I prefer just for more convenience these satin ones that you can get on Amazon in a two pack. They're very cheap. They're under 10 bucks and honestly I've had these for a while now and they, they still are like in perfect condition. So I love these. This is so good for your skin. It creates a lot more slip so your skin can't just get squished in a position. And then obviously the two of these slide right off each other. So they're great. So this has made a really big difference with my skin. I've noticed a huge difference with two of these and also with my hair because my hair, you know, it's fragile. It's curly most of the time. Curly hair tends to be drier and more brittle. So this just creates a lot more slip. Your hair cannot get all messed up from the cotton. There's no, you know, rubbing and just irritating the cuticle of your hair. So definitely worth investing in these. They are affordable and they make such a difference. So that is it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and got some useful tips. I'll be sure to link all of these products down below in the description box with any discount codes if I can find them. Thank you guys so much for watching.